What's up guys? Today I wanted to give you some tips on how to walk one of these bad boys, the frog. I hear it all the time. I can walk a spook or a popper in my sleep, but I can't get a frog to walk. And yes, it is a little trickier. So I'm going to give you some practical tips that will make this a lot easier. Just to, just to preface this, I'm not a master at walking a frog. It's something that I've learned recently. And I've decided that this year is going to be the year of the frog for me. So in order to do that, i got to be pretty capable with it. Number one, the number one tip I'm going to give you is more slack. I cannot stress this enough. 90% of the time, if I'm having problems getting a frog to walk, it's because I'm not putting enough slack out there. Uh, if you try to pull these on semi-slack or a, a tight line, it's never going to happen. What you have to remember about walking a frog is that chances are you're using a heavy, heavy power 7 foot plus rod. So if you try to work it the exact same that you would say work a, a popper on a medium power rod, it's not going to work out for you. This is generating a lot more power on that stroke. I guess that brings me to my second tip, which is don't don't sit there and slash it, okay? You don't like none of this. None of this hitting it really hard. Just just stop, okay? That's that's not going to help you and it's just going to tire you out. It's all in the wrist. You just want to honestly, if I was to describe a movement for it, it would be a tap. It's not a slash, it's not a rip. It's just a tap. Just a tap tap tappy. So that's all you got to do. Once you start to really give it some English, now you got to give it a little bit. You got to give it a little bit of, it's got to be, once you give it too much English, it's it's not going to happen. You're, you're, you're killing the action on it. You're just going to pull it or you're going to send it flying. Look here. Look how I'm just kind of tapping it. It's, it. it's not super soft. I find that I don't have to work it as soft as some people suggest. I do have to give it a healthy little a healthy little wrist movement but it's not a slash okay see how I'm just tapping it and it walks and that's what you want you want it to be effortless and that brings me to point number three which is uh, your gear okay most frog rods are in the seven foot plus range and they're a heavy power that's just the standard frog rod these days so here's the trick for walking a frog when you're using a longer rod. It's going to work a lot easier on the end of your cast. So at the end of a, a long, long-ish cast, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to cast it a mile, but on the end of a nice long cast, that's when it's going to work the easiest because that's, you're going to be working with all tip of the rod. If you try to walk that frog closer to the boat with a, a longer heavy rod, it's going to be harder. So when I see a lot of guys give up, it's because they're trying to walk that frog too close to themselves, too close to the boat or too close to the angler, when a long rod facilitates working it better at the end of your cast. When you're working it close to you, you're not working with the tip as much anymore. You're working with the, the meat of the rod, the backbone or the, or the middle of the rod. So that makes it a lot harder because now you're just, now it's just, exerting too much power on the frog. So keep that in mind. You're, you're going to have a lot easier time walking the frog if you do it at the end of your cast. Alright guys, thanks again for watching. I hope you learned a little more about the frog. Like I said, I'm no expert. I'm just getting into it, but it's becoming a passion of mine. If you liked the video, please leave me a like, hit the subscribe button, and stay tuned for the next one. Alright guys, see you later. Have a good day.